Hi everyone, welcome to Compliance Panel's live webinar on statistical procedures needed for compliance with the new draft guidance on process validation. My name is Dilip Sharma and I'm going to be your host today. On behalf of Compliance Panel team, I would like to thank you for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Stephen Kohara. Dr. Kohara is the founder and principal of GXP Biotechnology, LLC. He holds degrees in biochemistry uh, from Cornell and the University of Wisconsin. Having over 30 years of experience, Dr. Kuara is an experienced analytical biochemist who has applied his academic knowledge to quality control in the pharmaceutical industry and also in dealing with all aspects of GLP and GMP in relation to biopharmaceuticals. Dr. Kuara has uh, written several papers and book chapters and serves on the editorial advisory boards of BioPharm, BioQuality, and the Journal of GXP Compliance. He has held certifications as a CQA, CQT, and CQE from the American Society of Quality and was RSC certified by the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society. We are honored to have such a distinguished person such as Dr. Kuara with us to present this webinar. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, inform you of the program that's being outlined for this training session. This webinar is for 75 minutes duration. First, Dr. Kwara will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that will be covered, and he will then share with you his presentation. I'd like to inform you that all participants, once part of the teleconference, have been placed on mute and will remain so until the Q&A discussion begins towards the end of the webinar. It is for the purpose of avoiding discontinuity and for allowing the presenter to speak clearly so that everyone present can take maximum benefit from this webinar. We also request all to hold back your questions until the Q&A window begins. Ten minutes of time uh, will be allotted for the Q&A during which your questions will be answered. Now, if for any reason you get logged out of this training session or teleconference, please follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we are all ready to start, I request Dr. Kuara to take it from here. Steve? Okay, well, good morning all, or I guess in the case of you on the East Coast, good afternoon. Uh, we're gonna talk about the, the new draft guidance on process validation. And, uh, whoops. Okay, I can't get this thing to advance right now. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve uh, this is the here. You can just click on the uh, slide using your uh, cursor and then again try using your bottom uh, arrow. Okay. Uh, yep, that doesn't want to work. Uh, no. You can use your mouse. Oh, okay. yeah, I can Here's see it. Now. Here's, here's the, um, okay, the new draft guidance. Uh, that has come out, came out in November 2008, and um, here's the title, and you can find it on the um, FDA website, either under CEDAR, CBER, or the Center for Veterinary Medicine. And as you can see from this, um, this guidance applies to the drugs and the biologics people as, as well as the veterinary medicine people, but does not apply to either foods or devices. And um, so we we are mainly worried about foods and um, about drugs and biologics. Now, the new draft guidance that has come out, when this thing is finalized, it will supersede the older uh, guidance on process validation. So uh, we do want to take a look at exactly what this thing is saying. And the um, new draft gu guidance contains some very specific statements. And what I'm going to do here is to go through the guidance document and um, more or less do it by line number. And, and the thing here is this, the, um, if you go into the CEDAR website and download the guidance document, you'll notice that along the side, um, each line in the document is numbered. And it's sort of convenient in the sense that we can now go to these line numbers 
uh, to discuss specific statements that are being made. Now, the first line here, and uh, this sort of breaks into it actually, it talks about process validation as being a life cycle event. And we'll get a little bit further into the life cycle thing, but the, the whole point here is that FDA wants to see you maintain a state of control in your processes. And the idea being that the process validation will prove that you can maintain a state of control. And this usually means that we're talking about capable or a capable process, which means for those of you who do statistical process control and things like that, we're talking about the process capability indices, um, the CP and the CPK values for your process. Now, this is for routine commercial production. And you know, you, in order to do the CP or CPK values, uh, you do need to have some data that you obtain during routine production. And um, this is a little bit downstream from the development stage. Now, as far as the drugs that are cons covered by this guidance, we have human drugs, veterinary drugs, and biological and biotech products and the thing here is that in addition to the finished products, um, they're actually looking at APIs as well, or you know, work go leading to the drug substance. Now, this can be a little bit of a problem for those of you who purchase APIs from overseas, because um, there is sort of a requirement here that your API manufacturer should be using uh, some sort of process validation in doing their work. And it's very difficult at times uh, when you're doing it by remote control, trying to find out exactly what kind of process validation is being done overseas. And this is where I you know, routinely tell people that you really do need to go and visit your supplier and do some auditing to make sure that uh, they are following procedures that are under control. Now, the other thing that's covered here is if you have a combination product, <clears throat> it is the drug portion, and this could be a biologic. You know, biologics are biological drugs. So it, can, it would be the drug portion of, say, a drug medical device product or for instance, a so-called biological device, it would be the biologic. And these are the things that are covered uh, within the scope of this guidance. Now, remember that the APIs are also controlled. So this is you know, raw material that's coming into your plant. And usually it's made by some other group other than the people who make the final products. So there, there needs to be some good uh, communication with these people. The other thing here on line, uh, this is, by the way, um, I show a line and then I have comments related to that line. And, and these comments are sort of in italics. I, I don't know, this, these are the italics in this font, um, font set and uh, they're not quite as obvious but they are easy, more easily easy to read. The other thing to remember, biologics and biotech products um, are covered, and it, it's, they're covered regardless of whether they're regulated by CBER or CDER. You know, you, you have the uh, so-called well-characterized biologics that are regulated by CDER these days as opposed to CBER. But regardless of which way they go, um, the, the requirement for process validation still exists. They define process validation here on line 93, and they start to talk about scientific evidence that a process is capable of consistently delivering quality products. Now, 
here's the, the catch. You know, when you file your NDA or your BLA with um, the agency, the assumption that is made there is that the process you describe in the, B, in the BLA or NDA is going to be the process you will use to make your product when, once you receive marketing authorization. And FDA has, well, more or less stated in several communications that this doesn't have to be the perfect process but it should be a consistent process, one that is, makes the same product all the time. And, um, you know, even if it's not the best product in the world, as long as it's consistently the same product, um, that's what they're mainly interested in because that is what they license. And if you go away from that particular uh, product or that method of making the product, they need to have assurances that the new product, for instance, will be the same as the old product. And so we're looking at process validation as a series of activities, which means that you don't just do process validation once and then forget about it. You have to continue to do uh, process validation over the life cycle of your product and process. Now, the guidance that we're going to look at here defines the activities during three stages, and these are more or less the stages or stages of the product life cycle. And at stage one, we have the process de design, and it's during this stage that they expect you to define the commercial process. And it's during this stage that you start to set your uh, specifications for the process, for the intermediates, and both process specifications as well as product specifications should be developed at this point. At stage two, you have the so-called process qualification. And it's at this point where you're confirming the process as being capable of reproducible uh, commercial manufacturing, this is where you do your process validation as well. Then once you've gone into making a uh, commercial product, you have this continued process verification and it's ongoing assurance that your, your process is in a state of control. Now, the whole thing here is that, you know, you, if you start to make your product, you have to periodically check it to make sure that you're operating in a state of control. In other words, that the specifications you set for the process are being met and your product remains in a state of control by meeting its specs. Now, this usually requires the use of statistical criteria to set the specifications. You know, many people uh, just sort of look at a process and set specifications by some sort of rule of thumb. And um, this may be acceptable during very early stages of development, you know, where you look at a set of numbers and say that, well, okay, the, the first two lots uh, produce these two numbers, and um, why don't we allow a 10% margin you know, on either side of them or something like that. And then use that as your preliminary process specifications. But at the stage where you start to look at the, the reproducibility of the process, you have to take into account the actual variation that's present. And to do that, you have to use statistical criteria and you have to set your specifications um, making allowance for the statistical uh, values, especially for the variation that's present. And this state of control when you're into actual uh, commercial manufacturing usually requires application of SBC procedures. And these are not extremely difficult procedures. It's just that you have to learn how to use them. And SBC is not a single